Welcome back to Mark Making Video 2. You should have the following supplies. You'll need your scratch paper that has scratch paper written at the top and your name in the lower right. And you will need the paper that we folded in video one with your name in the lower right hand box and along with your class period. This is what you'll be showing to me at the end of this video before moving on to video three. You're also going to need your six drawing supplies which include the Sharpie, ballpoint pen, mechanical pencil, crayon, vine charcoal, and number two pencil. You're going to watch this video twice. The first time you're going to fill out the scratch paper with all 12 techniques that I'm going to show you. And I want you to try out different media with each of the techniques. So by the end of your first viewing of video two, your paper should look something like this. I've got all 12 techniques scattered around in no particular order, and I've used all six media with each of the techniques. So if you'll notice here on Scratchy, we have mechanical pencil, ballpoint pen, crayon, sharpie, vine charcoal, and regular pencil. When you view the video for the second time, you're going to find your six favorite techniques of the 12 and apply them to this folded technique sheet that we made one technique per box. I want you to fill the box up, use variety and contrast in your line quality and values. I also want you to label which technique you used. Now you'll have a seventh box left over here in the bottom and I want you to do a little Google search for mark making and find something that I did not show you how to do. You can even make your own technique up. I just want you to explore and experiment with um, all of the media and try different techniques and see what kind of marks you can make. Now I've already begun to um, put some examples together for you but I want to show you a few like how I did these. So with the smooth technique your goal is to try to make as smooth of a transition as you possibly can using your pencil or whatever tool. By the way I'm only going to be using my number two pencil as I work on these but remember you'll need to experiment with all the different media that you have laid out before you. So with the smooth technique, you can either use your pencil on the side, like with your hand over the pencil, and you're just trying to shade in and fill in without showing individual strokes, trying to make it a smooth transition. If you want to hold your pencil regular, that's fine too, but the strokes may show up a little bit more. I can um, use different amounts of pressure to make areas darker. So if I use a lot of pressure, I make it darker. Uh -oh, I'm showing my strokes. Let's smooth out a little bit more. And then I can lighten up to make it appear lighter. Remember, when you turn this in, you want to be able to show differences in value and line quality. If you want, you can, um, some people like to use their, use their finger to smooth out strokes that they've made to give it a little softer edge. If you've ever done any sort of shading, maybe you've done that before. Some people like to use paper towel to help smooth it out. It's not necessary, um, but different things that you're trying to do may call for different techniques or applications. For the scratchy, it's really random and crazy. Think of just going all over the place. Imagine you were drawing a picture of your front yard and you wanted to show grass. Maybe this is the technique that you would use to show the texture of grass. It's really crazy and all over the place. If you want it to be lighter like I've done in this area, you just start using less pressure and open them up so that you see more of the white of the page. And that's the scratchy technique. For stipple, this is the one that you get to drive your neighbors crazy. Um, when you're doing this, just be careful if you're using the crayon or the Sharpie, don't ruin the tip of it by getting too crazy. But basically, you're just dotting, dotting your pencil or your um, art supply against the paper to make all these random little dots. If you keep them real tight and close together, that area is going to, going to appear darker. And if you want it to be lighter, you just spread the dots out a little bit more. So that's called stipple. We have the dot and dashes. It's short pushes of the pencil to the side and dots 
to give your different values and things like that. I like to make them horizontal, but if you were doing a picture and you felt like vertical lines might be better, vertical dots and dashes, you could do that too. In fact, I'll do some of that here. It's hard to throw those dots in there when your hand gets used to doing dashes. And that is dots and dashes. Scumble, um, scumble is just a fancy word for scribble, but it has a little more control than just scribble. Um, you're kind of pretending like your pencil or your art supply is like a tornado. It's going in a round, round, round motion. To get things darker, you would just condense those little scribbles tighter, open them up for, for it to be lighter. When you were first learning how to color, maybe this is what they taught you to do when you're trying to make a nice, even uh, coloring to use your crayon in such a way that it's small, tight circles and it makes a nice, smooth mark with your crayon. Experiment with that. The next one is vertical lines. We're making light dots and dashes. We're trying to make, instead of it being so short, light dots and dashes, we're trying to keep them nice and long. Think long, flowing hair. It takes my whole arm from my hand to my elbow to make these marks. I'm pulling my whole arm back to make these vertical strokes. For darker areas like I did there, I might use more pressure, push down a little bit more. I keep them nice and tight and close together. For things to get lighter, use less pressure and open it up some. So that's vertical lines. See how I'm beginning to fill the box up? Remember, you want to fill the whole box up when you're doing these. The last six, we have hatch. Hatch is similar to dots and dashes as well in that you're doing short strokes, going at an angle, and you fill them up nice and tight to make those dark areas. And another technique uh, sheet that I found, um, it showed this as being the definition of hatch. And that's fine too. Um, you don't have to do things exactly like I do as long as you're experimenting with mark making. Um, here's the sheet that I found online and I printed it out. This is their idea of hatching. It's not what I was taught in art school, but that's okay. It looks really cool. It can make a really neat texture. Uh, so if that appeals to you, that's fine. I think the way they did that is they started by putting triangles and squares that were really tight together and then just chose a direction for those hatch marks to go. And it makes a nice texture. Um, Crosshatch is our second technique, or actually seventh technique, and just like hatch, you start with strokes that go in one direction next to each other. The beginning of the stroke is maybe a little bit darker, and as it glides up, it gets lighter and more fuzzy. Um, then you want to hatch by going, crosshatch by going the opposite direction across. So fill your box up with cross hatches. The next one is contour. You start with one shape. Let's say I want to make a flower shape. And then you repeat that, getting bigger as you go around. You never pick up your pencil, you're just kind of following around. Later on in the semester, we're gonna talk about contour drawing and how you can actually draw objects by never picking up your pencil. So this is similar, getting you used to that. If you want to make an area darker, maybe put your lines closer together. If they're lighter, spread them apart. When I come back around, I'm going to get real tight again so that one side of this appears to be darker. There we go, and loosen it up again. Round and round and round we go. So that's contour. Zigzag, I had way too much the first time I did this, so there's not a lot of room, but it's just simply zigzagging your pencil up and down. That's really easy. And I'm not worried about filling it in or making it completely dark. If I want the area to be darker, just like I did here, I just go in with another set of zigzags. And it gets that area darker by hiding more of the white of the page. Spirals is a lot of fun too. So put your pencil down and just go round and round and round and then tighten up as you get toward the center. Round and round and round and round. So you can see the first few that I did, I did them real tight and I did a lot of spirals within and they look darker. These were a little more open and loopy and it appears to be lighter. Bubbles, when I was trying this before, my arm was completely tired and I was worn out. So 
let's see if I can do better this go round. Bubbles is just a series of circles that you're putting next to each other, trying to not let them overlap. That was a bad one. If you want an area to get darker, you start making, start making smaller circles, nice and tight together. And it gets darker. Now I'm gonna start getting lighter again by opening up those circles. And again, I would just fill that whole spot up. Okay, well that's all 12 techniques. Make sure you watch this video twice. Um, fill up your scratch paper. First, use, experiment with all of your six media. Get all 12 of your techniques in there. You're going to be showing this to the teacher, as well as your one page with six techniques. I'm not, six techniques plus one that you make up down here in the seventh box. You're only gonna turn in one page. Here I have two pages. You're only required to show me one page with six different techniques. Pick ones that you like, use different um, mediums, media with each of them, and make sure you show it to me when you're done.